All right. Is everybody ready for a third lockdown or I don't know? I'm in the state of California. I don't know how many uh, this would be, I guess, our second one because we just barely came out of the first lockdown. But it is looking more and more like what I feared, which is that um, Europe is going through their lockdowns right now. They are hitting uh, the countries over there are going into it. In London, there was a massive protest that actually broke out over the weekend, massive protests of thousands of people, anti-lockdown protests, which, by the way, in the UK right now, it is illegal to protest because of the coronavirus. So not even peacefully. People cannot peacefully protest in London. So but thousands of people did anyway. They said, screw it. We're going out there. We're protesting this. We cannot go into another lockdown. Whatever Europe does, the United States usually follows about three weeks later. And Right now, we're at that time period. It is March 22nd, and this is about one year ago. We started to see the the virus hit the United States, and we started to see in April, the big surge is when that really hit us. So they're kind of preparing us for this potential surge that happens in April because this virus tends to like, and I've talked about this in the past, uh, this virus tends to like a certain temperature. And that temperature seems to be like in the 50s, okay, you know, 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And it seems to thrive in that temperature. So what happens in a country like the United States is in the fall, we start to have that temperature early on in the fall in certain areas, right? It goes in waves. So starts off in the north. The north is the first to have that 50 degree weather while people in the south are still enjoying 70 degree weather. And then that temperature starts to slowly move down, right? It slowly moves south. It kind of waves. It goes east to west and slowly moves south. And so what we see with this virus is that in the early fall, we start to see those surges in the north. And then as we get kind of deeper into winter, it kind of makes its way further south. And then by the time it hits California, that's like December, because that's when we're finally hitting that 50 degree weather, uh, when the north now has like zero degree temperatures. Right. So the north starts to see the virus slow because the virus doesn't seem to like really cold temperatures and it also doesn't seem to like really hot temperatures. So when the north gets really cold, the virus starts to go away. We notice this in my home state of Idaho, for example, the virus was really surging in October, November when Idaho was in that 50 degree weather. But then as Idaho got colder and colder and colder, as it gets closer into uh, deeper into December, into January, we saw the virus going away. Well, during that time, that's when Los Angeles started to get into that temperature zone. And that's when it started surging in Los Angeles. And I spend my time going back and forth between the two states. So I know these two states well. Well, then uh, what happens is, is spring starts coming along. And that is when we start to see the temperatures warm up And we start to get back into that 50 degree temperatures in places in the north. And that is now what we're seeing happening. So Michigan, let's say, for example, and I'm going to show you uh, what's going on in in Michigan. So here's from the Atlantic. Here's this article, the clearest sign the pandemic could get worse. And they show the graphs here. This is in uh, Michigan. And they're saying these are the Michigan metrics. And you could see here the cases today. Let's see if I blow this up for you guys a little bigger. So the cases, uh, you could see the dip here. See how it's got like getting how it's going back up. This is cases. So it went down and now it's going back up. This right here is hospitalizations. This blue right here. So you can see it went down and now it's going back up. It's trending upward. This right here is what is this? hospital admissions today so daily admissions the other one was current hospitalizations this is hospital admissions and you can see it going up and then here's deaths and deaths usually follow two weeks later so we they anticipate this graph here this gray graph they anticipate this will start to see an uptick in about two weeks or a week um because it follows in that way in that pattern so that's michigan Well, uh, that makes sense because Michigan had that really that kind of temp, that 50 degree temperature, 40, 50 degree temperature um, er, in the fall heading into winter, heading into the deep winter. They went into the deep winter. Things started to go down and now they're going back into the spring where things are starting to warm up and they're starting to see slightly warmer temperatures and the virus is coming back. So. Uh, It looks like, you know, we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping that the United States will not have this third wave and potentially need to go into a lockdown because my hope is that because the United States didn't lock down as 
I would say harshly as Europe did, more what we saw was the U.S. saw way more cases per per, per uh, well. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think the U.S. did see way more. I mean, we saw more cases only because we have a bigger population. But actually, per million, let me just see if we could type this in real quick. Per million. Um, I don't know why my keyboard isn't working here. I don't know. I guess I can't. I don't know why my keyboard isn't. Oh, you know why? Because I don't charge it. Oops. <laughs> I didn't charge my iPad keyboard, so I can't type this in. I guess I could do it by hand. I hate touching the screen on this because I'm so slow. Oh, looks looks like I'm able to do it. Okay. Now I know I need to charge that keyboard. Um, when we look at, what were we going to look at here? We were looking at, oh, yes, the U.S. When we look at deaths per million population in the world, the United States is, um, where do we stand comparatively? Yeah, we're 13th. So when you look at this here, you've got like Belgium is fourth, the UK at eight, Italy at 11, the US at 13, Spain 16, Mexico 17, France 21, right? Okay, so I would like to think that we've already had reached some level of herd immunity because a lot of people in the United States have had it, but um, it doesn't really actually quite look like that just yet. It looks like maybe we still have a, we'll see what this next wave looks like. Um, but essentially this virus is uh, coming after everybody. And so, you know, if you haven't had it yet, I guess it's it's coming for you. And now they're also saying that it's coming for you even if you get the vaccine. Let me actually show you this uh, article that is also from The Atlantic. Um, they said here, don't be surprised when vaccinated people get infected. They said post immunization cases, sometimes called breakthroughs, are very rare and very expected. So they're saying they're rare, but they're expected. So they're saying, you know, don't be surprised. So they're trying to sort of uh, prep us for this. They're prepping us for this, you know, oh, I got vaccinated. I still got COVID, you know. And so they're kind of softening this by giving us these articles now. We're seeing more and more of these articles coming out uh, and they're going to be talking more and more about it. And then they're also talking more and more about these waves that are coming through, how the uptick in Michigan, we're going to see the uptick in the northern states. And that is uh, looking like we're going to see a bit of a third wave or whatever wave we're on um, in the north. So we'll see if the U.S. starts to lock down again. Hopefully not. But we do seem to follow what Europe does and Europe is under is going into lockdowns now, and they've been in lockdown. Some of them already locked down already. And so we may be going into some more lockdowns. I, sh I certainly hope not, because it is not a strategy. It's not it doesn't work. Obviously, um, if lockdowns worked, we wouldn't need to be continually going into them. But we go into them really. You know, the purpose of the lockdown should have been to lock down while we come up with a plan. And that is what we failed to do. We absolutely failed to come up with a plan while in lockdown. Instead, we used lockdown as the plan. And that is, quite frankly, obviously a very bad plan. It's obviously not working. It's not stopping the spread. It's not even really slowing it much. Uh, maybe, you know, and maybe you could continue to make that case well, but it's about not overwhelming hospitals. And I understand that, you know, that's fair enough. But why aren't we then ramping up hospitals and, and building more of them and making sure we've got plenty to uh and, and lots of you know and focusing on treatments and vitamin d and ivermectin and all these other things that seem to be working and now there's other treatments the good news is there's another treatment that they're that they've tested in small studies and it looks really promising and so hopefully they get that one through even more before we do have this third wave because again you know even a vaccine doesn't help you if you've if you haven't had the chance to get it and now you've been diagnosed with COVID and you're frightened for your life, uh, the what we should be at least be able to offer these people is a really good treatment in order to save their lives. Because that's looking like that's probably going to be the only path forward. They're saying that with these vaccinations, they're not sure how the, well they're going to work now because all these variants and they don't maybe work with the current variants. And then, of course, there's future variants that we don't know about yet that haven't happened yet that are sure to probably happen. And will the vaccines work with those variants? We don't know. So treatment is a focus. Health, personal health, uh, keeping our weight down, getting our sunshine, getting our vitamin D, right? Eating healthy. Those are all things we should be focused on as a country in order to combat not only this virus, but future viruses as well. 
that would be the smart way to go about this. But instead, we're all locked down. And I heard a stat that the average I can't I don't think this is true. This can't this doesn't sound right to me. But have the have the average person now gained 30 pounds during the pandemic? That's what I heard that it was 30 pounds. I'm like, okay, 30 seems like a lot. Maybe 15. I could I could see 15. But 30? 30 seems like a lot of weight. Did we really gain 30 pounds during the pandemic? I know I gained 15 for sure. I'm super fat compared to how I <laughs> look at look at the show a year ago. Compare me then and now COVID. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching the show. Please be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell. Uh, we're hopefully we're still working our way through this. That's for sure. So thanks, guys, for being here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to stick around for the after show.